Hello and welcome to JFTC. I would like to take a few moments to explain to you the training that will occur here in Bidgosh. Soldiers from many nations arrive here in Bidgosh in order to conduct this training in the building that you see behind us. Of course they arrive with a considerable amount of skill already, but the purpose of this training is to improve their capability to act as a unified staff. This training occurs in phases. You will hear more about these phases now. The training audience arrives. First step in processing. Security passes, familiarization with JFTC, arranging accommodation and meals, meeting colleagues, and learning the training timetable. Then, the real business begins. Mission-specific training aims to inform and educate the training audience with key information required to enhance knowledge of the operational environment with the use of lectures and classroom-structured learning. Mission-specific training is the first part of the training that we deliver here in Joint Force Training Center. Uh, this part is dedicated more to academics, we, where uh, the people will uh, get the knowledge necessary to enter the second and the third phase. So during this uh, period, they will uh, learn a lot about the environment, about the basics, the procedures, and also the communication system that they need to know to be able uh, to be up to run in the exercise. Uh, they have uh, roundtable discussion, lectures and panel discussions. And this all covers the mission specific training. Functional area systems training provides an opportunity to understand role specific information such as responsibilities, process and procedures. The aim is to tell the people what their role is in the information process and how they can participate in a correct way with all of the other people together in the decision-making process. Without it, it simply wouldn't work, would it? You're right. Uh, without that, uh, systems, what we use, uh, they cannot work together because they have different information levels, they have different knowledges and this cannot be. The main trainers during this phase are subject matter experts or SMEs. The subject matter experts that we uh, provide for this you know, type of training at this headquarters uh, provide a wide range of expertise, uh, whether it be medical training, uh, whether it be operational, whether it be personnel, whether it be personnel recovery, whether it be uh, counter ID or explosives. Uh, so that what they do is they provide their expertise to the training audience uh, and during the later, later stages of the exercise uh, their job is to kind of step back from the training uh, and provide oversight so when the training audience has a question and they're not familiar with their area of expertise or what they're doing in their job the SME will step in and, and kind of guide them. Battle staff training enables the training audience to begin cross-functional working between staff branches and to understand the interaction with other organizations. The outcome is team cohesion and awareness of other functional roles and responsibilities. Battle staff training is a central part and it's supposed to be the transition between the first phase, uh, individual training, and uh, the last phase where they should be able to train other teams. Uh, to reach this goal, uh, my aim is to raise up in a progressive way uh, their ability to work together, first in their own uh, branches and uh, in the last phase of battle staff training uh, to be able to deal about complex problems uh, that request the involvement of all branches. Uh, at the end of my phase, they are supposed to be confident enough and uh, have the opportunity to have this team building to start uh, to train properly as a team for the MRE phase, the mission rehearsal exercise. The mission rehearsal exercise phase builds on all the knowledge developed throughout the training. The mission rehearsal exercise enables staff to operate under controlled conditions using simulated scenarios. The MRE culminates all previous phases into one final exercise, where the training audience can rehearse their techniques, tactics and procedures for their future mission. 
Our computer systems are programmed to challenge them with several storylines and hundreds of incidents a day. It can either consist of operational environments or artificial scenarios. This is where we see if the staff can work together as one cohesive unit. JFTC is at the core of NATO training. The center's motto, Transformation Through Training, reflects its mission. It provides centralized pre-deployment training and the opportunity to experiment to ensure NATO masters tomorrow's challenges. By the time you will believe in the JFTC, I would like you to be a really strong team, which is able to come together, provide strong advice and support to your commander in his decision making and in particular in execution of his mission. I can guarantee you that we can provide to you the best possible training environment, but not only by the trainers, but also we have in our position for you all necessary computer systems supporting it and separate life support. So use it all in order to come together to learn your procedures, but also use it for building trust, confidence among yourself and building strong teams, including your stay after the training cars in the city and use that opportunity to possibly extend. It's a great opportunity, yes, of course. I guess that uh, after this training I will be ready for uh, regular work in RC North. We'll get here all necessary information about the uh, mission. Really important thing is actually to get to know the other staff. I'm very excited to know a lot of soldiers who will be with me in Afghanistan.